Penelope Robertson was born and raised in a small town located in northeastern Maine. She didn't remember her parents. Raised by her grandmother, Penelope knew the value of family warmth and affection better than anyone else. The girl went to the forest from an early age, collecting mushrooms and berries. With a wicker basket, little Penelope wandered through the forests of Maine for days on end, not afraid to get lost. Time passed. Unbeknownst to herself, Penelope turned into real beauty. Since a guy named Nicholas had been courting her since school, the question of the wedding was resolved. It was played simply, without unnecessary luxury and fuss. At first, family life seemed like a fairy tale to the newlyweds. Nicholas showered his wife with flowers and gifts, almost every minute confessing his love. It seemed that happiness was already very close and you could touch it with your hand. The only thing that poisoned the life of Penelope and Nicholas was the absence of children. They did apply everywhere in order to solve this problem. Time passed, but it was all in vain. And when the couple has already completely despaired and decided to take the child from an orphanage, a real miracle happened. At the age of 40, Penelope finally became pregnant. Needless to say how happy Nicholas was. And nine months later, David was born. Nicholas doted on his firstborn and was looking forward to his son to grow up, to take him hunting and fishing with him. Unfortunately, his expectations were not destined to come true. One day, going hunting alone, Nicholas got into a heavy snowstorm. After getting lost, man wandered around the forest in circles for several hours until he finally ran out of strength and fell dead into a snow drift. Despite the fact that rescuers and rangers were still hoping for a miracle, the woman's heart knew that her husband was no longer alive. Penelope used to trust her intuition, which never failed her. So, at the age of 42, she became a widow. She gave all the unspoken affection and tenderness to her son David. A loving mother could not stop admiring her child, and since childhood, spoiled him. Not skimping on expensive gifts, the boy grew up capricious, and looked just like his father. He rarely helped his mother with housework and studied very badly. As he got older, David never let go of the deck of cards, perfecting new tricks and tricks. The game became his passion. He spent days and nights playing poker, trying to catch fortune by the elusive tail. When the dads began to significantly exceed the winnings, the negligent son decided to try his luck in a big city. Goodbye, mom. I'm going to the city. I'll find a job and live better than before. David said and hugged his mother goodbye. Furtively wiping away a tear, Penelope slipped some money into his pocket and escorted him on the road. A year later, David sent his mom a postcard from Portland on the occasion of her birthday. David wrote that everything was great and he intended to marry the daughter of rich landowner. Son asked not to come to the wedding in order not to embarrass him in front of guests. After reading a letter, Penelope Robertson cried all day. And so, the unhappy woman lived alone. She collected mushrooms and berries, worked as a seamstress at home. One day, Penelope accidentally stumbled upon a puppy in a ravine. His paw was injured. The puppy limped noticeably and squeaked when he limped on her when walking. The woman took the puppy home, washed and treated his paw, putting a bandage on it. What should I call you? Penelope thought, resting her chin on her hand. What about Buddy? The old lady said cheerfully, addressing the puppy. He wagged his tail gratefully and licked his lips as if given his consent. Buddy quickly went on a mend and soon was already galloping around the yard, chasing birds, rabbits and other animals. Over time, he became a loyal friend and helper for Penelope, turning into a huge black dog. Now the old lady was no longer afraid to go to the most remote parts of the forest, knowing full well that if anything, the dog will be able to find its way home. One day, Penelope was walking along the forest path with a basket of berries in her hand. It was still a long way to the house, but the dog, weaving between bushes and trees, confidently led his mistress to the goal. Suddenly, Buddy growled, and the fur on his neck instantly stood up. What's wrong, honey? It is animal or person here? Asked the woman, who knew how to understand her pet from half a glance. Growling excitedly, the dog rushed into the nearest bushes, and a minute later, he had already dragged the frightened guy into the clearing.
The old woman stood anxiously at the ragged stranger in strange robe. Remotely, it resembled the form of builders or factory workers. I beg you, take the dog away. Please, I won't hurt you. The exhausted guy pleaded. The stranger was frail and thin, and his gaze shone with a feverish gleam. Only now did Penelope realize that the man was most likely the fugitive. Did you escape from prison? Isn't that right? And where are you going looking like that? The police will catch you anyway. The woman reasonably objected. I had no choice. My mom died two days ago. So I ran away not knowing the way. I got lost and have been wandering for the second day in a row. In general, I'm not a villain. Don't think like that. I had only six months left of the measure term. The young prisoner sat, sighing bitterly. Okay, let me help you stood up. You rest in my house. Come to your senses, and then you decide for yourself what to do next. Penelope said, and putting her shoulder under the guy's sagging arm, hobbled towards the house. On the way, the guy then lost and regained consciousness, over and over again. Finally, they reached the old woman's dwelling. Removing the fugitive jacket and boots, Mrs. Robertson put him to bed, covering him with a warm blanket. The guy slept for almost a day without waking up. All this time, an elderly woman fed him broth with a spoon, and gave him a decoction of medicine herbs. Finally, on a second day, he opened his eyes and looked around with surprise. Where am I? he asked. In a good place. Don't worry, honey. Come to your senses and get rest. Penelope replied. When the prisoner's memory returned, he said his name was Kevin, and how he was convicted of hitting a man at the pedestrian crossing. I didn't even hit anyone. It was my fiancé who got behind the wheel for the first time that day. Her father was a rich businessman, so he promised me a lot of money after our release. He said that he would help my sick mother all the time while I was in prison. Of course, I'm a naive fool, believed and took the blame on myself. And a rich man immediately forgot about his obligations, leaving my sick mother to the mercy of fate. Kevin explained in a sad voice. You know what, man? Listen to my good advice. Turn yourself into the police before it's too late. I personally go with you to the police station and explain the situation. Mrs. Robertson offered sympathetically, but Kevin felt awkward and evaded the answer, and early in the morning he was already getting ready for the road. The old lady did not torment Kevin with the questions, but only collected food for him on the road and dressed him in his son's old clothes. At parting, she gave the guy the lost money, asked him, and wished him the good journey. The figure of the fugitive soon melted into the haze of morning fog, and sighing bitterly, Penelope patted Buddy's withers. The latter, as of realizing the seriousness of the situation, wandered around the yard with his head down. The old lady has made it a rule to go to the post office every day, waiting for some news from Kevin. But there were still no letters, and Mrs. Robertson Hart could not find peace torn apart by the unknown. But apparently that year, accidents and unexpected meetings for Penelope were just beginning. One early morning, there was a knock on her door. Opening the door, the old lady was stunned. Pretty girl stood in the doorway. She was about 25 years old, had a bag in her hands and barely noticeable rounded tummy. Hello, Mrs. Robertson. I'm Mary, the wife of your son, David. Or rather, an ex-wife. The stranger explained, lowering her eyes in embarrassment. Sure, come inside, Penelope suggested. The girl happily agreed. As it turned out, she traveled from afar and spent more than one day on the road. After giving the young woman tea and a cupcake, the hostess prepared to listen to her. I met David two years ago. He turned my head, and we had a whirlwind romance. He's not a bad guy, but he didn't work anywhere and led an idle lifestyle. As it turned out later, I was not his first wife. The previous ones abandoned him, unable to endure humiliation and poverty any longer. And six months ago, he became very ill. The doctors did everything they could, but they could not save David. He left me a lot of debts and a child, whom I carry right now. The girl said sadly. Mrs. Robertson started crying. He was her son, after all. Her own son. Mary hugged her failed mother-in-law, trying to comfort her. The old lady gladly agreed to shelter her at home. 
Isn't there enough room for both of us? The house is huge, the hostess said fervently. Together, it has become much easier for women to live. Mary turned out to be an extremely good and accommodating girl, helping her mother-in-law to pick berries and keep house. She did it willingly and eagerly, as if atoning for the sins of her wayward son. Six months have passed. One winter day, when the snow was almost on the roof, Buddy suddenly barked, squealing happily and wagging his tail. The dog rushed to the gate. It was Caven, with a bag on his hands and a joyful smile on his face. Look, Mrs. Robertson, I'm back as promised. The money you gave me was just enough for me to have time to spend my mother on her last journey. Then I went to nearest police station and turned myself in. They took into account my circumstances and my voluntary surrender to the authorities. I served the required six months before the end of the term. And that's it. I'm free now. The former prisoner shouted joyfully. Well, come in, dear. If you only knew how glad I am to see you, said Penelope and escorted Guy into the house. Mary stared at the guest with interest and, smiling sweetly, offered him a cup of tea. They decided to spend winter together, and in the spring, Kevin promised Mrs. Robertson put a new house next door, twice the size of the old one. After learning about Mary's situation, he, without thinking twice, suggested that the girl give the child his last name. The baby should have a father, and I owe Mrs. Robertson an irreplaceable debt. I've been dreaming about a child for a long time, and I'm happy to become a father, Kevin nodded. Mary thought about it. She frankly liked the guy, but she was afraid of the unknown. But yielding to Kevin's confidence, she agreed. In the spring, as promised, Kevin started the building new house. A month later, a boy was born, who in memory of his father was named David. During this time, Kevin became very attached to Mary and offered her his hand and heart. The girl was glad, and Penelope Robertson approving the choice of the young blessed their marriage. So, by the end of her life, the old woman had a new family, and her house was filled with cheerful children laughter, the echo of which can be heard there to this day.